In this video, we are going to see how to calculate complex power, average power, and reactive power. In order to do that, first we have to con convert this one into phasor domain. Now let's go ahead and convert this one. Let's draw our new circuit. So this is going to be our new circuit, and when we convert this voltage from time domain to phasor domain, we are going to have the amplitude and the angle of the voltage given. Here the amplitude is 170, angle is not provided, so it means this is 0 degree. So we are going to have 170 0 degree and uh, all of this resistor inductance and this resistor all of them are become, going to become impedance when we convert this one into phasor, phasor domain okay. Now resistor is going to remain the same when we convert resistor from time domain to phasor domain that is still going to be 5 ohm okay and when we convert this inductance from time domain to phasor domain that's going to become j omega l okay. In our case, omega is equal to 377 because whatever the value that multiplies the t, that's our omega. Omega is equal to 377 and the inductance is provided that is 0 0.04. So we can calculate this one j times 377 times 0 0.04. And if you calculate this one, you're going to get you're going to get j 15.08. So this is going to be the impedance we are going to have right here okay this is j 15.08 and this resistance is still going to remain the same this is going to be 10 ohm inductor i mean the 10 ohm impedance okay now when we have impedance in in phasor domain we treat impedance as same as the resistor okay so we can like when we have this one in series we can add them together when we have this one in parallel like if we have two impedance in parallel we can do the product over sum in order to find the equivalent impedance now we have to find the equivalent impedance because to find the complex power we are going to use this equation s is equal to let's say s is, s is the complex power that's going to be equivalent to half times the voltage times the current now in order to find the current we have to find out the impedance because we know that v is equal to i z therefore i is going to be equal to v over z so if you find the equivalent impedance we can find the current because we already have the voltage so we can solve for current now let's go ahead and find the equivalent impedance z equivalent so we put this 5 and we make this one in series with 5 to make this one we have to find the equivalent resist equivalent impedance to find the equivalent impedance we can do the product over sum product is going to be j 15.08 times 10 divided by the addition that's going to be 10 plus j 15.08 and if you do that you're going to get 11.95 ohm plus j 4.61 ohm this is in rectangular coordinate and if you convert this one into polar coordinate you are going to get 12.80 ohm and the angle is going to be 21.1 degree okay this is a polar coordinate form now we have this impedance so we can go ahead and find out our current current is going to be i is equal to v over z in our case v is equal to 170 zero degree so 170 zero degree divided by 12.80 21.1 degree and if you calculate this one you're going to get 13.3 ampere negative 21.1 degree okay now we can go ahead and find our power now let's continue that part here okay let's get rid of this one okay to find the power we are going to use this equation s, equal, s is equal to s is the complex power that is equal to half times the voltage the voltage source is 170 zero degree angle and also we have to have the the current but we have to have the current in complex conjugate form right now let's copy down the current so current is 13.3 angle is negative 21.1 degree but if you want to convert this one into complex co complex conjugate form we have to just turn this one into plus and that's it we just have to change the sign now if you calculate this one you are going to get 1130 and the angle is going to be 21.1 degree and this is in 
polar coordinate form and if you convert this one into rectangular coordinate that's going to give you 1054 watts because the units of the power is watts and then we are going to have complex number that's going to be J407 and this is also unit of watt, uh, unit of power but this is in different way like volt ampere reactive VAR okay now this is our complex power this is the whole thing is complex power this is complex power and if you want to find the reactive or oh, let's say let's find the average power the average power is this part the real part of this power is going to be the average this is our average power average power and the imaginary part of this power is go the complex imaginary part of the complex power is going to be the reactive power right reactive power and that's how we calculate complex power average power and reactive power now to find the average power you can use another formula like you can use power factor formula like let's find that one here let's do that here to find the power factor what we do is we take this angle the 21.1 degree that angle so we find the power factor using that angle like power factor is equal to cosine 21.1 degree right you already can see the power, that angle in current right and if you calculate this one you're going to get 0 0.933 and to find the average power you're going to use this equation that is half times the voltage that's 170 then you multiply that one with 13.3 13.3 and then you multiply that one with power factor when you do that you are going to get answer similar to 1054 okay because this is our average power and that's going to be same as this one and that's how we calculate average power complex power and reactive power i hope this helps thanks for watching